And you said you don't speak to Lance. So it sounds like you don't, do you speak to anyone other than no. Ebony? No, no, I don't. I mean, I speak to the women I was on the show with, just not anybody on the current cast. Like my real friendships are what are real. And the friendships that I have because of the show or had because of the show, you know, or changed my spots for, you know, those aren't, I never really had a, after I left the show the first time, I had no relationship with Sonia, none, because I don't have any relativity to Sonia. We don't, I don't travel in her circles. I don't, we don't, I don't have a lot in common with her. We had the show in common. That was it. And when I saw her again on the show, I was happy to see her. It was good to see her. She looked great. I, I, she was funny. She was that weekend, truth be told, the best part of it for me. I enjoyed that. Does that mean like I've been out to lunch with her and dinner with her and, uh, you know, I'm just forging some false relationship with her? No, I'm honest. It's like nice to see you. And I really mean that. But no, we're not going to go, you know, kick up our heels together in town tomorrow night. Right. And you were no less close to Luann and Ramona before. Like it's Luann and I were truly friends when we were on the show. I mean, we, when I first joined the cast of the show, I had a friendship with Luann that I, that meant something to me. She was in my home with my young children. They knew her. My husband knew her. We had a friendship. I knew her daughter and her son. And you know what I mean? We had what I considered a friendship. But when I left the show, that friendship was like, I was a show friend for Luann. So something for me that was real was very shallow and, you know, just served a purpose for her. And once that purpose was over, then the friendship was over. So that's just not how I roll. So that's, right. that ship sailed. I thought maybe we could come to, I would have an honest truth about that with her on the show, but I never stayed on the show. I didn't want to stay on the show. So, and I didn't really, and I, when I spent that little bit of time with her, I had no interest in trying to rekindle or dig up something that was, was once was. And the truth of the matter is really with that, I learned the true lesson that you can never go back. Nothing is ever the same. You can never go back. It's always going to be different. So that was that. And Ramona and I had a friendship because of the show. We stayed in touch like a sorority sister or something would. Not a very close one, but one that had an experience with, you know, with somebody. That's what I had with Ramona. And when it came time and they asked me to come back to the show, she was very excited to, for me to return. Luann was excited to have me return. Sonia was excited to have me return because they all knew they needed the sixth player. Not so much that it was me, but they were like, no, we get this. But it was too much for everybody that weekend and it wasn't worth it for me to continue. Were you ever sorry that you left? I didn't realize it was only three days, like that you left after three days. And then, like you said, like you watched all this play out on social media, like everyone had an opinion. I mean, we're way past that now, but like, right. Did you ever say, I wish I didn't leave? I at least I would still be there to explain a lot of stuff and look at social media. No, it was more like, I wish I had never gone back. It, I, the, after that weekend, I was like, I mean, it was like, how fast can I get the hell out of there? I, it was so creepy. I was actually talking to Carol in the car service on the way home. And I was like, I said to the driver, like, you can't repeat this kind you know, is this car bugged? Like, I felt so dirty. It was, it was very dirty. I felt like it was, I I've said this to, to the higher ups at Bravo. I thought it was dirty producing. I thought it was self-produced. I didn't like any of it. I didn't recognize any of it. And it didn't feel um, like the right decision for me. And that's why I didn't continue it. Well, what about, you know, if you were a producer on this show, what, who would you like let go for next season to get the ratings back up? Um, Okay. So if I'm going to really put on producer hat, I would recast the entire show. I would start from brand new. I would take all the lessons that I learned and I would recast the show in it's entirely. And I would relaunch the New York housewives. In other words, let everybody go. I, I, I would re I would recast the entire franchise and relook. I would first, I would re-strategize the show I would look at, as a producer, as a businesswoman, I can speak as an entrepreneur. If yeah. I got a seat at the table, these would be the questions I would ask. I'd be looking at all the ratings. I'd be looking at all the shows. I'd be looking at what the diverse groups are, who's looking into it. I mean, there's so many layers of a decision like this. But personally speaking, because I've been a part of the upset from the beginning, like where they fired half the cast, they were going to replace it. And be, be honest with you, initially, there was more than just three on the block. They weren't really sure. 
how much they were going to upset the cast. And the reason for that is, so let's go back to facts and history, is it was never cast to be the Real Housewives of New York. It was cast to be a show called Manhattan Moms. So that's why New York was an anomaly. It was like a little bit different than all the other ones. So now knowing what I know, knowing the franchise I had built, knowing that the girls that were on the show for 10, 11 years, I think it's like 11 years now, right? Well, no, 13 More, years, yeah. 13. So for 13 years, I mean, I think that that's a really good run, you know? And there should be, they've helped build the franchise. You know what I mean? There should be some sort of nice severance package and they should even know that that doesn't work with this contract. But that's what I would do if I were a producer of this show and I was running for the Bravo Network. I'd want to upset this apple cart and bring on some change and do some good work along with the dramatic toxicity that, you know, is addictive. And do you think, cause that is one of the reasons people say it's like an off season. Like, do you think it's because there is no bridge? Like it's, this is not a cohesive group. These aren't no, real they don't friends. Know each other. They don't know each other. Lee and Ebony never knew each other. That's all made up. They, you know, allied together or whatever it was they did. Luann, they don't know each other. You know, I mean, when Aviva joined the cast, Luann knew her, Sonia knew her. They had a history with that you know, with that woman. I had, I had met Sonia, you know what I mean? She had come to my showroom, you know what I mean? We had met. So meeting her for a second time at a party with her new friends, like that worked. And I had met Carol right one time before filming. So there was, and we didn't pretend, we didn't pretend, we didn't pretend to be best friends. We didn't pretend that we knew each other, that we knew each other. Like that was one of the things that, that was an issue when I was on the show, when Aviva brought her friend to the show, which wasn't really her friend, the stylist. Do you remember the one, um, what was her name? Remember when I was on the show, it was the big, it, it, when I said, um, oh, you want to deck me, honey? Deck me. What about, well, if they were, okay. Do you feel anyone should be brought back from the past then if you were going to let Not everyone really. know? Not really, because I'm a perfect example and maybe I wasn't, you know, everybody's top pick, but I was a pretty neutral choice. You know what I mean? Um, that I think that there's history and there's no, the history doesn't need and it needs to be reworked. It, it needs to be re-strategized. That's what I think, because I think we need some more goodness in the world. You know what I mean? We can't have too much sap, right? People don't want to see all that. You know, we can't have too much politics because we can just turn on any news station, any station pretty much right now, and you're going to get politics of some sort. So how do we balance it? How do we play the balance? And to me, that is storytelling. People bring in their stuff. People bring in their lives. And being that the fourth wall is such a problem, then script some of the damn show. You know what I mean? Make some of it unscripted. Let the, they're not actors, but I mean, at this point, I bet, you know, some of the OGs could, you know, do an uh, act. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it happens. So I was actually talking to Carol in the car service on the way home. And I was like, I said to the driver, like, you can't repeat this kind of, you know, is this car bugged? Like, I felt so dirty. It was, it was very dirty. I felt like it was, I I've said this to, to the higher ups at Bravo. I thought it was dirty producing. I thought it was self-produced. I didn't like any of it. I didn't recognize any of it. And it didn't feel um, like the right decision for me. And that's why I didn't continue it. When you were in this car looking around to see if there were bugs and you were talking to Carol Raswell on the phone, as you say, what was Carol's reaction to like the fact that you were leaving after three days? I told you so. I mean, literally. And we did have a conversation that, you know, even being on the show as long, three years longer, maybe even four, I can't remember, than I was, there was um, things that I didn't know about the show. The show had even changed during that time that I was no longer on it. So when we spoke about it, she's like, I didn't even really think to tell you that. Like, I forgot when you were on, it wasn't like that. You know, she was kind of, it was like, what it did is it solidified that I would not return. You know what I mean? Like it was, she didn't realize that some of the things that she was assuming that I knew, I didn't know they weren't, they didn't happen when I was on the show that way. So that was some of the things that just reconfirmed that. And she was upset for me um, because she knows how toxic it can be. And she knows what the internet's capable of and you know, production and the edit, you know, she was really worried about the edit. And I was like, still naive. I'm like, I mean, there's nothing. The one bad thing I really did, I, I own, and I'm glad I did it. 
only because I could teach people from it. She's like, yeah, don't be so sure. You know, she was more, she was more concerned for me. 